This presentation provides an overview of Chapter 3 in the book titled Simple G, A Gridded Economic Approach to Analysis of Sustainability of the Earth's Land and Water Resources, edited by Amon Hakiki and Thomas Hurdle, and published by Springer. This chapter covers the economic foundations underpinning the gridded structure of the Simple G model. This slide provides an overview of all chapters in the Simple G book, each of which has an accompanying presentation to motivate the material covered in that chapter. During this presentation, I'll cover Chapter 3, which is on grid level analysis using Simple G. The aggregate simple model developed in Chapter 2 is useful to study the impacts of global shocks, such as changes in income and population worldwide as well as region-level policy responses to these shocks. However, there are important limitations if one wishes to study land and water conservation policies. First, conservation policies are likely to target specific sustainability hotspots, as opposed to an entire country or simple region. Second, the appropriate responses to sustainability policies depend on the site-specific, biophysical and socioeconomic characteristics. In this chapter, we contrast the differences in the impact of a given conservation policy in a resource-abundant versus resource-scarce context. Third, localities that aren't directly targeted by the policy could be indirectly impacted due to spillover effects, which often lead to unintended policy consequences that are important to understand for equitable and effective policy design. The gridded version of the simple model known as Simple G, applies the theoretical framework to each grid cell engaged in agricultural production. The concept of grid cells is widely used in integrated assessment modeling and refers to an area on the Earth's surface defined by the intersections of latitudinal and longitudinal lines. The exact size of grid cells in the different models within Simple G is discussed in further detail in later chapters. The same framework can be applied to other spatial delineations, such as counties, states, farm resource regions, or labor sheds, as they are relevant to the research question. The economic framework is founded on a two-input production function, involving natural resource and human-produced inputs. The distinguishing feature of the gridded model is that output prices are exogenous to producers in each grid. The equations in this chapter are represented in percentage change terms, following an exogenous shock. The change in demand for either input is determined by cost minimization by producers, leading to the derived demand equations in equation 3.1. We consider two cases of input supply. In the first case, the price elasticity of human produced inputs is infinite. This means at a given wage rate, demand for human inputs fully determine the use of human inputs. The second case relaxes this assumption, where both input prices are determined within the model. We also use the zero profit condition in equation 3.3, which implies that in the long run, all economic profits are captured by both the inputs. Equation 3.9 shows the impact of an increase in total factor productivity on total production in a given grid cell when labor is perfectly mobile. Each term in this equation, except P and A, which are aggregate level price and productivity change, are indexed by the grid cell, but with the G index omitted. Using this equation, we can decompose the change in output into three economically intuitive components. The first term shows the direct one-to-one -one impact of improved productivity. The second term shows the extensive margin response to the increase in productivity, which depends on the price elasticity of resource supply and the cost share of resources in the specific grid cell. The third term shows the intensive margin response to the change in productivity. The magnitude of both the extensive and intensive margin responses are driven by aggregate level price and productivity change, but depend on the biophysical characteristics of the grid cell. 
The case of a perfectly elastic supply of human input is an oversimplification for agricultural labor. Empirical evidence has shown that farm workers are becoming less mobile, and producers need to offer higher wages to attract migrant workers. In this case, the second and third terms of the output supply equation show that the intensive and extensive margin responses are deflated, meaning that output is less responsive to commodity price changes. Furthermore, the perfect price elasticity assumption completely overlooks the wage impacts of policies, which is calculated using equation 3.7. On this slide, you'll find the link to the SimpleG web page where you can find additional resources, as well as links to the book and other chapter presentations. Lastly, we also gratefully acknowledge support from the U.S. Department of Energy, the Department of Agriculture, and the National Science Foundation. Thank you for watching this presentation on the Simple G book, Chapter 3. We encourage you to explore the other companion videos that accompany the book on the Simple G web page.